Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Russ Kinsler. Russ is a fisheries biologist uh, stationed up here in Riverdale along beautiful Lake Sakakawea. We're going to talk about the salmon program. Russ has worked with that for quite a long time. Russ, uh, I guess we're in uh, mid-August here, so uh, this is the time of year that people start to get their salmon boats and their special equipment out and start to troll for salmon. Yeah, the, the bulk of the salmon fishing really starts the end of July, and then usually the first couple weeks of August are the best time to catch salmon with downriggers. And, but, but it does go throughout the whole month of August. And then once you get into September, then the fish start moving a little shallower, and guys start getting them with long lines. And then uh, and toward, shore fishermen. Yeah, too. towards the end of September and into October, then the shore fishermen really get into the, the salmon. So, let's give the viewers a little bit of background on the salmon program here in uh, North Dakota, Russ. How we got started stocking salmon and why? Okay. Well, the reason we started stocking salmon was Lake Skakwe is a, a big lake. It's deep. It has lots of cold water and. Uh, Salmon were a means of taking advantage of some of that colder water at the bottom of the lake that other fish didn't really utilize. So they decided to put salmon in as an added uh, sport fish for uh, fishermen. Um, the first salmon that were stocked in Lake Skakawea were actually coho salmon, stocked in 1970. Uh, they stocked those for a few years, and then in 1976 they put in Chinooks, or king salmon. And then uh, there was a few years where they did, they alternated, but Basically, by the beginning in the 80s, they, they switched to uh, Chinook salmon and have been stocking those ever since. The uh, salmon fishery here in Lake Sakakawea is kind of self-sufficient. I mean, we take the eggs here, we rear them here, everything is, is right here in North Dakota. Yes, uh, our salmon here in Lake Sakakawea are certified disease-free. So we collect our own eggs in, uh, in the fall, basically in October, and uh, transport the eggs or actually we spawn the eggs in the, in the hatchery right below the dam and the hatchery takes the eggs and uh, hatches them and raises the fish and then we turn around and stock those fish back in Lake Skakwea so the fish are held entirely right here and uh, that way we don't have to worry about bringing in diseases and stuff from other states. Alright, you don't stock the same number of salmon every year Russ, do you? I mean, by that I mean you have to kind of balance the forage to the uh, to the prey as it were? Yes, Yeah. Uh, we, we look at uh, basically the number of rainbow smelt uh, that are in the lake and we use that to determine how many salmon we're going to stock in the lake. So years of lower rainbow smelt we stock less salmon and years like this where there are, are lots of rainbow stock, uh, smelt we stock more salmon. Right, of course directly after the flood when we, uh, 2011, when we lost a lot of smelt through the turbines uh, back here for a couple of years we uh, didn't stock as many but now we are. Yeah, actually uh, we were stocking a fair number right after the flood. Uh, prior to the flood, when we were in the drought, we had really decreased stocking numbers. Um, but we had been holding right around 200,000 for several years, and now last year the rainbow smelt had a really good year, and uh, we increased stocking this spring to 400,000 salmon. So, Let me ask you this, Russ. How do you know that the rainbow smelt had a good year? Uh, there's got to be a special way that you count them. Yeah, we use what it's called hydroacoustics. Um, it's basically a fancy depth finder that we, we drive back and forth across the lake at night and it when we do it at night because the smelt tend to move off the bottom and spread out a little more it counts basically how many smelt are, are in the lake. So. The, uh, the uh, salmon are a cold water species you mentioned uh, and this is a very deep lake so obviously it's going to take some special equipment to fish for them. Yes when the salmon are in the, in the colder water uh, usually in the middle of the summer, starting the end of July and August, what a thermocline sets up, and the salmon hang out right around that thermocline, you know, right below it, or they can come above it. So right now, that's probably at about 75, 80 feet down. So to get down that far, people use what's called downriggers uh, to get their lures down into that zone. Uh, once we get into September, when the fish moves shallower, then you can get them with more traditional gear up, you know, shallow offshore or behind a boat. All right. The uh, lake, Lake Sakakawea, has really rebounded, as we mentioned, after the 2011 flood. It seems like it's very healthy right now for walleyes, northern smallmouth bass. Is that the same for salmon? Are we in pretty good shape? Uh, it, it basically is the same for salmon because all those species you mentioned and the salmon, their main forage out in Lake Sakakawea is the rainbow smelt. So when the, smelter do, when the lake is full and the smelt are doing good, then all fish species are doing good. 
How's the fishing shaping up? Well, <laughs> be, be, put you on the spot. Be, because the fish are doing good and are healthy doesn't always mean fishing is great. Sure. Um, they are catching some salmon. Uh, it's not like what we'd like to see, but part of that is when there is lots of forage out there, that makes fishing sometimes tough. Um, I mean, that, that's fishing. Right. <laughs> Our salmon program uh, needs some help from the salmon fishermen in the uh, in the tagging program that you guys set up a couple of years ago. Uh, let's take a minute here and talk about that tagging program and what salmon fishermen need to do to uh, make sure that uh, our salmon program stays healthy. We've been tagging for a lot of years. Um, what the tagging program and the salmon does for us is it we tag different sizes of salmon when we stock them and it's a, a method when we get the, the tags back to determine what works best for salmon fishermen to catch fish and it also what works best for salmon to return to us to the spawn. So by getting those uh, tag returns back from the salmon fishermen we can try and improve the fishery you know in Lake Skakawea. How do they know if a fish is tagged? Okay, if you catch a salmon and the adipose fin is missing, which is the, the soft, fleshy lobe fin at the back, the, towards the back of the fish on the top, uh, if that is missing, there is a good chance there's a tag in the, in the nose of the salmon. So all we need you to do is to, to cut the head off the salmon and turn it in either to the Game and Fish office here in Riverdale or in Bismarck, or to the, the, the gas station in Riverdale, which is the Honey Hole, or the Scott's Bait and Tackle in Pick City. All right. Russell, thanks. Thank you. As salmon fishing shifts into high gear, there are also a number of hunting seasons that will open soon. The early Canada goose season is now or will soon open. The season starts Saturday, August 15th. Dove season is set to open Tuesday, September 1st. Bow season for deer and pronghorn and the mountain lion season all open on Friday, September 4th. The much anticipated season for sharp tails and ruffed grouse and partridge is scheduled to open Saturday, September 12th. The youth deer season opens Friday, September 18th, and the youth waterfowl season starts the next day, Saturday the 19th. The resident early waterfowl season opens the following weekend, Saturday, September 26th. The pronghorn firearm season starts Friday, October 2nd. Saturday, October 3rd marks the opening of the youth pheasant season and the regular waterfall season. The pheasant and fall turkey seasons both open the same day, Saturday, October 10th. The deer gun season starts at noon on Friday, November 6th, and the deer muzzleloader season is scheduled for a Friday, November 27th start. For Russ Kinsler and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.